practice tests. Those of you who got, who didn't turn their practice test in for the part, part one of that on Monday, I said to get, or on Friday, I said to give you another day. Please take that out. I'll collect it real quick. Oh my goodness, you probably missed the travel. Ah, yeah, that's not to Oh, uh, blue box. Yeah. No, I'm using mine. I'm using on it, so I'm going to go to the office. Oh, that's not my bad. No, no, no. Yeah, you can have it. 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 Did everyone grab one of these? These are just uh, this. I gave you that first practice set, so this is the second one. Thank you. Anybody else have that one? I said I'll give you one more day, aka I guess weekend. I don't want green paper. I know, and it hasn't changed one bit. Nick, put your name. I'll give you. Oh, I'm going to credit on there. I'll give you a little bit of credit for this. No, bring it in. I'll look at it. It's people like you that. Okay. Thank you. And then I wrote it. Good. Good. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'll be glad to catch. Did I take somebody else? I did take yours. I've got that one. How do we do on this one? Those of you who took it on the one got as long as you got more than 20 correct, you've done very well. And I like it, we got hundred percent. And hopefully when you go back and look at it, it's like, oh, I could have got that one. All right. So most of this period was at the review session last night, slightly majority. Not as many people 
Damon, I know it was really nice, but still, not as many people came and took advantage of that. And so, you know, my subcondition must be about done. That's easy. Yeah. I will take it. Uh, I'll take it today or tomorrow. For the review. If you did the multiple choice in the in the back of the review book, the 55 questions you have to the steps in the back of there, I'll give you. Just make sure it's it says by your help. You got it? Very good. How'd you do? Do you do great? Then he's on he's on teams. It's just like the one that you no, I have the, the review book for the entire our book. Do you, I thought I looked at it. No, uh, let me show you this real quick. Those of you who did that, the extra credit is. Let me make sure it's still on there. Let me show it to everybody. This will be exciting and fun. Okay. So check it. Come back. Okay. So the re the key is in there. Yeah. Back of the book. Seven hundred. Seven hundred and two. Everyone do that. I I forgot, but just the back of the book. There's a whole practice test. All right. So everyone got this? Do I need to get your oh. and let's quick uh let's go and finish up our last section in the mighty 70s. Yeah, same thing is that the review, the back of the book. Yeah. Just yeah, just check it. I it's probably you have to go as a PDF to have to scroll through the PDF, but did we get to so I showed you the uh the, the the swing wing, right? Yes. So we're cool. Swing wing. One more time. Swing wing, real quick, before we get started. Swing wing. No sound. How can you listen to this without sound? Okay, if this doesn't work, concussions. After seeing this tour, it's a miracle that anybody's left the lab today. Moving on, radiation. All right, let's get right to this. Can we get, okay, women's rights. We mentioned before Betty for that. So Betty Friedan would write the feminine mystique, and the mystique was this whole idea that women only need the domestic role to be happy. There's nothing else, and anything beyond that domestic role, woman is a failure. That was the whole concept of the feminine mystique, and this would be partially triggered by the events of World War II. But don't forget, there was a fight for voting rights and the fight for the Equal Rights Amendment right after the 18th Amendment was ratified, and. The whole thing was the 14th Amendment. It is not clear, exactly, it's not clear that women are guaranteed equal rights. In fact, it's up to interpretation. If, if it's up to interpretation, interpretation, they're not guaranteed equal rights by definition. Because you can interpret it one way, as you know anything about the, the current Supreme Court, they're very likely to, to interpret it another way. Yes. That's not even the Supreme Court. Laws are always written that way. Laws are written, if you know anything about law, being laws are, uh, it's a combination of the people are in a hurry. Uh, laws are amended. They, they, they rush things out as quickly as they can. They make mistakes all the time. And so partially, partially it is they clean it up or they don't clean it up later. That might be the Supreme Court would clean it up. Supreme Court, though, that's not the Supreme Court's job. And so, no, no, 
the president interprets the laws. The Supreme Court, if there's a court case, has given himself the power of judicial review. But their job is not to interpret the law. That's really a gray area, a big gray area in our Constitution. Don't forget, Marbury versus Madison gave themselves the power of judicial review. And so, don't forget the Civil Rights Act said no discrimination based upon sex. But it wasn't really enforced, it wasn't really thought of, and they still have that gray area. And that is a big deal when you have over half the population is a gray area when it comes to rights to this day. I know it's only about 52% of the population. So that's not too bad. It's actually kind of mind boggling. And so one of the big issues was the issue of women being dependent. And one of the big fights of the civil or the feminist movement was, early women's rights movement was through a complicated combination of equality of education and equality in the workplace. And the workplace being the most important, women would not be dependent upon somebody else. Specifically, you look at this whole thing about the domestic role, a husband. And so the point about the point then would be that men and women would equal and decide on relationships based upon equality, not based upon one person being dependent upon the other. And so, Oh, that's Betty for Dan right there. Family planning would be the other biggest issue. And don't forget, this is a big issue once you have the Industrial Revolution and with the wage system, children went from being something that could also be used as an economic unit. I know that sounds horrible, but an economic unit. But now with the wage system, it changed. It's radically changed families. And one of the most important issues of women's rights, maybe I would think probably the most important single e single innovation that would give women more equal rights would be the birth control. It's hard to come up with anything else because this allowed, this put the family planning in the position of women's hands. And this was a fight of Margaret Sanger from the 1920s until she died in the early 1960s. And she would start Planned Parenthood. The whole idea was to help women with family planning. And this would definitely change that dependence. This is a huge deal. Yes. Oh, sure. There have been birth controls since there have been humans. We're not going to go into all the details of it, but yeah. There have been birth control and there have been and there's been attempted abortion since the beginning. And Griswold versus Connecticut would be an incredibly important court case. I forgot the year 1963. And that, because of this, this Supreme Court rule, there's an implied right to privacy in the Bill of Rights. And because there's an implied right to privacy that people have, that means that women can have birth control. Women can decide birth control. And this is a big, issue. And uh, this is actually really big because there was just a ruling that the Supreme Court had stayed about um, getting rid of or not allowing for, for abortion, uh, abortion medication. And part of the ruling was it said that the Griswold decision was, was invalid. And the Supreme Court stayed it but it doesn't mean they will in turn. So this is a big decision. This is privacy. Uh, the whole issue about this is privacy. And I should add the state, of the state constitution of Montana written in 1971, citizens of Montana have privacy rights. So that is in the state constitution. But this is federal, remember the Bill of Rights and everything else. And so with that, this would be a big issue towards the invasion. How about this? Huh? Independence. Somebody forgot to spell independence. But you know, I was in a hurry. I could I didn't have time for the P or another E. It was just too much work. So independence. But one of the big issues are why family planning was so big. I've seen so many studies. This is from the University of Michigan from 2012. And I just use this because it shows it so well. But one of the reasons why family planning was so important is that women, when they have a child, their wages drop dramatically. And 
that is to be expected, especially in society, women are still the primary caregivers. But that's why family planning is so important. If you know that your wages are, that somebody's wages is going to drop dramatically, as a family, we must prepare for it. And here shows the big joke, as you can see with this pass right here. And wage rates, hours worked, all of those dropped. That was the issue that the feminist movement had. Family planning is important because of the economics. Of it. Speaking of that, therefore, one of the biggest issues of the feminist movement would be the Title IX of the Education Act of 1971. Title IX. And in it said, no discrimination in education. I don't think I typed that down. No discrimination in education. I thought I had another picture here. And it's actually kind of startling what happened. Title IX is going, it's going to lead tentatively, but more women taking honors classes and especially math, science classes that women just simply weren't allowed to take. But pretty soon, you're going to get significant increases. It shows you right here about participation of every ethnic group, but skin color didn't matter, more women in school. In fact, today there are more women in college than men. And that is a radical shift. And it's all because of Title IX. Most people think about Title IX, they think about what early on it was just um, activities, and especially sports for women. They just simply did not exist. There were no girls' sports in school or women's sports in college. You might see some, but they were all like almost like a club. So like the first organized girls basketball game in Montana High School was in 1972. And I remember I was at the game, Mile City, the first one. They called the news of Mile City, it was Custer County High School. That's the high school I went to. They were the cowgirls. I was a cowboy. And, uh, but it was half court. They jumped ball after every made basket. It was the weirdest rules. And the game was pretty tough because women didn't, you know, they didn't play a lot. But you know, if, if you follow basketball or any other sport today, it's it, it incredibly good. It just took a while to play. But this is going to be a major shift. Education is one place where um, you're going to see a, a lot of parity between the races. Another very important decision that's coming up is the issue of abortion. And there have been abortion. Like I said, since the beginning of humankind, attempts have done. But abortion rights, what happened was there were inconsistent laws in states. There were a lot of kind of back alley, very dangerous abortions where women would be mutilated in these kind of hatchet jobs um, because of this. So part of the argument was for safety, but the other one was economics, I just showed you before. And this would be one of the linchpins of the feminist movement, would be abortion rights. There are a couple different cases winding their way to Supreme Court. Roe versus Wade started in Texas, and that ruling would be for safe and legal abortion would be a seven to two ruling. But the ruling was so convoluted, they, they divided up this abortion by this very complex and totally made up by the Supreme Court called trimesters. And have you ever heard of trimesters for pregnancy, which I imagine most of you, especially a young woman has, it um, that was totally made up on the Supreme Court. And this really convoluted, it was fact, it was so convoluted that Warren Berger, the chief justice of that time, voted with the majority, and he was thought he thought he was voting against most abortion rights. That's how complex and weirdly written the ruling was. And it was not that controversial when it was first signed. It would not become a divisive political issue in the United States until the late 1970s. It's weird how it just wasn't divisive, and then all of a sudden it was. You saw the first anti um, Roe versus Wade protest in 74. By the way, it's Lyndon Johnson died the same day that came up. Strange course in history. Boy, did it become divisive afterwards. And a lot to do with a growing kind of a new change of it. It was called the religious right that came in the 19, late 1970s. But in 2022, Roe would be overturned and partially based upon 
throwing out a little bit of the Griswold decision and also claiming that I, I don't know, it's, it was a tough one. But this is a very conservative Supreme Court today. And this is the way it looks up as of two weeks ago. States in brown now, abortion is illegal. Yellow, it's protected. Why is it protected in Montana? The legislation would gladly overturn it. But the Supreme Court in the state of Montana has ruled that since the state, the Constitution said every citizen has privacy rights, abortion is covered. And so there have to be a new Supreme Court. And that's part of the reason why they wanted to have a Constitution amendment to weaken the Supreme Court, but it did not get the two thirds full necessary. Yeah. Only the U.S. state or both are both. They have a certain secure term. Yes, but that's implying that lifetime appointees aren't influenced by part of the politics in a foreign state. Uh, I think, yeah, but it's a, but it's almost an Yeah, you know, but you don't have to worry about your thing. No, no, you just, so you can read it. Yeah. Okay, so if Roe v. Wade is in the fight for privacy, how is it overturned? Uh, is privacy like not a It thing? basically shipped away Griswold, and Griswold is not there. So that's, that, that, and even, and in the ruling, there were concurrent opinions that basically said that Griswold is improperly. So they'll probably go on. There's a good chance that case will come. I don't know. You know, that this this is going to be when you're a senior in high school. Uh, last few questions. Yeah, real quick. Technically, but Idaho passed a law that says if you travel across the border, you're broken the law. And this is actually a big constitutional issue. Can a state ban? They just passed it. Yeah. Blue, blue states have expanded access to abortion. So those are states that have opened to that you know, women have abortion rights, more abortion rights. Uh, these are protected, but there are some limitations in Montana. Uh, Brown, not protected by the state law, but it's still legal. But it's not protected, meaning it could be overturned. I know we have a whole hodgepodge of stuff. It's, yeah. Another very important in, um, bill for women's rights, this goes back to Alice Paul, way back after, through her fighting and suffering through hunger strikes, got the 18th Amendment. She immediately started fighting for an Equal Rights Amendment to alleviate that problem of the 14th Amendment. Despite the Civil Rights Act of 64, laws can be overturned very easy in Congress. So the ERA is really simple. It just says no discrimination based upon sex. I'm paraphrasing it slightly, but that's literally all it says. And it looked like it was going to pass right away. Both political parties in their platform in 1972 were for this. President Nixon said he was for it. He'd be followed by President Ford, who said he was for it. And every and most Democrats were for it. In fact, those states in the brown passed it almost immediately. But they need three quarters of the states. And they got hung up at 35. It's in the state constitution of Montana that there's no discrimination based upon sex. And that is also a part of the element of why there's abortion rights in Montana. But anyway, you can see this big string here. Illinois actually just ratified it, but it's kind of too late. Virginia just ratified it, but it's too late. I should add, it would not get through the House of Representatives in, in Washington, D.C. now. So it, it needs two thirds of the vote. We need to get close. And wouldn't get out through, a, through the Senate. Either. And Montana would be proud of that. And so the fight became huge then for these last few states. Do that. Yeah. Oh, 
about that. This is how I break minds. Is that loud when I hit that? Yes. So there's going to be a big backlash, a conservative backlash against this, partially led by women, very conservative women. Billy Schlafly got her chops running for Bert campaigning. For Barry Goldwater, even wrote a book for Barry Goldwater, Ghost Road. Here's Phyllis Schlafly right here. And she became a leader of the anti ERA movement. And this would be a real cover for conservative men who could claim, well, I'm not for or against it, but women aren't totally for equal rights. And there was a real fear by a lot of women that this was kind of degrading them and they might be forced to get a job they don't want. Jobs are really hard. And they thought, I don't want the job I have now. You're going to make me get a job? And so a lot of men started saying, and this sounds horrible, but this was used all the time. This is just a cat fight between women. And if they can't decide, why should we support it? And it stalled and was never ratified. And anti-ERA would be part of a conservative revival. Ronald Reagan, who would be the Republican nominee in 1980, become the president. He was the first major political candidate in the 70s to go out against it. And here are women for Reagan, stop ERA, supports Reagan. And ERA was not ratified. Yes. But laws can be overturned. Not necessarily. No, not necessarily. Well, the point is, if you don't have the actual constitutional rights, that's already implying that women are still second class, unless it is guaranteed. That's, that's so, yeah. Yes, that's what it guaranteed. It. They would have to turn over the Constitution. So that was a point. But it's, as you can see from this, it's really, 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 did I say really? Really hard to do. It'd be impossible to get a constitutional amendment to that. I don't think they could get a constitutional amendment saying kittens and puppies are cute. I don't think that would get through. And I'm I'm not exaggerating. Some of you seem not to find kittens cute. You find puppies cute? See, that's the problem. You're not with me on this. And the fight would be really interesting. And so part of it would say that women's rights and, and feminists would encourage women to leave their marriage. Men would become subservient for women. Uh, women would become, they didn't lie about it. I like witchcraft, witchcraft destroy capitalism, and become lesbians. That was said all the time that that's going to happen, implying you know, that women are kind of, you know, they can't help it. And also the, the, one of the biggies would be bathrooms, that if you get rid of uh, or make say that women are going to be discriminated against you'll no longer have men's and women's public restrooms as you can see with this from 78 and this bathroom thing has been a very effective for various reasons to this day and i find that fascinating because as we all know if they're probably right if you have a public place with a if you don't have separate men or women restrooms what do we have correct you never see that in Montana, do you? Oh, wait, all the time. Okay, moving on. Yeah, they scared people and it worked. ERA was not ratified. Okay, let's get back a little bit about the war. In 1969, the biggest anti war protest took place. And even though Nixon was actually trying to find a way to draw down American troops, not in the war, but draw down troops, millions marched around the United States. A cross section of society didn't go to work. We're talking young people to senior citizens marching against the war. Millions. And Nixon's reaction was a total freak out. I mean, he just, oh my God. This could spell the end of my 
candidates or my presidency. He barely won in 68, and Democrats still had huge control of the House and the Senate. And so his strategy was, I have to make marginalized, the anti war movement, make them look bad. Say that they're not actually fighting to bring troops home to get out of the hell of this war. But they're actually traitors who are going against the United States and attacking troops. And they're a bunch of drug addled hippies. And they started pointing a lot of these signs. This is a, a protest in Chicago, that's 68. Here actually was the human being, this big kind of celebration in San Francisco in 1967. But they, the whole implication was they're not real Americans. They're stabbing us in the back. They're helping the Viet Cong. And some members of the anti-war movement kind of helped out by making comments like this. And while that is going on, they began a policy called Vietnamization, which was simply to turn the war over to the South. And so the U.S. could begin to withdraw troops. And most U.S. ground troops withdrew. Now, we actually increased bombing with planes based in Thailand and, air and carrier based planes. But troops went down dramatically. Remember the Tet Offensive? The Viet Cong was so decimated that gave us breathing space to make it look like we're doing it. So, Vietnamization and South Vietnamese foreign soldiers right there with hundreds of millions of dollars of U.S. equipment. We said, First, it appeared like a are doing well. And it, the draft was so corrosive and despised by people. The draft was changed to a lottery. Now, this actually was passed and signed by Johnson, but Nixon was president in 69. Before draft boards chose people, it was unfair. Remember, a little bit of money you could get out. College is the best example. They turned it to random. Everybody would. Everybody, every birthday would be assigned a random number, one to 365. The lower the number, the best chance you have to be drafted. But if you got a number, let's say 200 or higher, you're not gonna get drafted. And therefore alleviated pressure on Mason. The draft went for being this arbitrary draft call to, it's random. And so there's a chance to get out. And everybody, every young man, they did it twice a year in 69 through 72, draft call this is January, draft call in July. If you're if you were part of the January draft call and you weren't drafted, you're probably out. That alleviates the pressure and also lessens the anti-war movement. And this appeared to work for Nixon at first. And then Cambodia. The US actually began secretly bombing neutral Cambodia in 69. But in 1970, the United States, along with South Vietnamese forces, invaded. This, this little finger of land that sticks in near Saigon is called the Parapeak. They thought they could knock out the Viet Cong headquarters. The whole plan was a victory in Cambodia. The Viet Cong were sheltering in Cambodia. That would allow for more Vietnamization. But to many Americans who thought the war was winding down, was this an escalation? And protests were triggered all over the country. Some of the biggest anti-war protests. And now they're focused solely on Nixon, who appeared to do, appeared to escalate. The University of Montana was shut down for a week. In fact, they burnt down the old ROTC building. It wasn't a plan, it just kind of happened. Anti-war protesters here. But some of the worst protests were at Kent State. Nixon made this announcement on Monday. By Thursday, the protest has died down. For the first time on May 4th, 1960, I'm sorry, 1970, Kent State had classes. But National Guardsmen, who had no training in this, here are Guardsmen in this college commons, Kent State's in Ohio. Huh? And they panicked. When they saw students leaving their classes, thought it was another protest, somebody fired a shot in the air, and the next thing, thing you know, they opened fire into the crowd. Killing four and wounding at least 30. This is going to be unprovoked. There was a pretty rough anti-war protest for about three days, protest for about three days, but not here. 
Here is one of the most famous pictures of the Vietnam War. She has just discovered this man who was shot in the head and murdered by a National Guardsman. And she didn't know, just it was just happening. And Nixon, of course, did not order this, but he's going to get blamed. And here is one of the more famous ones trying to res resuscitate a man who was hit. And this would be hung by the dorms the next day. And then, two days afterwards, at Jackson State in Mississippi, state police would open fire and kill or wound over 30 people. They killed two, you might see sources of six times five, and I think two is closer. No one talked about Jackson State as much because it was a black man. Kent State is from Georgia. And You might think that there'd be a lot of sympathy for the for the um, for the for the students. There wasn't a, as much as you would think, and there were a significant number of people who sent telegrams. Still, when it was in telegrams, letters, letters to the editor, praising Nixon for this, and we should shoot all the traitors. And this shows how divided the country would be. In fact, four days after Kent State. At a protest now that it's kind of anti what happened in Kansas State and anti war. Construction workers and those who dressed up like construction workers in hard hats. Here's another picture of them with um, flags and carrying the big ones, big heavy uh, wrenches, pipe wrenches, waded into the crowd and just beat the hell out of protesters. And the police stood by and cheered them. And this shows this counter protest how bitterly divided they were. And the hard ass became just grabbed by Richard Nixon. He soon called this the silent majority. So Nixon was able to turn what was a political defeat in Cambodia to a victory, saying that these protesters weren't the real Americans, weren't the hardworking ones who do their job, don't complain. Now, of course, people complain all the time. But implying that those who are protesting the war aren't real Americans, aka traitors. And they really began to push this idea we're going against traditional values. So here's Nixon with a hard hat. Today we call this culture war. Hard hats were all over the Republican convention in 72, and he met with Elvis. Okay, so with that, Elvis came to talk to Nixon about doing something about the scourge of drugs, and Elvis volunteered to help. In fact, he wanted to be made a special FBI agent. Why is that humorous? Elvis wanted to stop the, pro the scourge of drugs. He was on an entire cocktail of drugs. He also gave Nixon a handgun and what a belt buckle, huh? Huh? I know you're thinking about a gift for me. No, no, belt buckle. But Nixon also showed what a crafty politician was. He got his start being a rabid cold warrior, and yet he went to the People's Republic of China. He opened up relations with Red China, partially because China and the Soviet Union were going uh, through a falling out that's not stronger. They actually had pitched combat on the Manchurian border between Soviet and Chinese forces in 1969 and 71. Also, this would make North, this would put pressure on North Vietnam in peace talks and eventually open relations would happen in 1979. So Nixon, the Cold Warrior, opened up China. Also, a lessening of peace, a lessening of tensions with the Soviet Union. This was called detente. And Nixon actually met twice in the United States with Leonid Brezhnev the premier of the Soviet Union, who took power after Khrushchev. He's the one who would help build up all these weapons, destroy the Soviet Union. He, too, won an armed race. I know what you're thinking. All Soviet leaders seem to go around, around without their shirts. So I thought I'd show you Leonid Brezhnev in a bathing suit. And I got good news for all of you. That image will never get out of your mind. You're welcome. 
So the SALT agreement was actually an arms limitation, not a reduction, but they limited strategic nuclear weapons. Something that Eisenhower was hoping to do way back in 1960. So Nixon, even after the disaster of Cambodia, drawing down troops, China, detente, and he took credit for EPA and the moon landings. So in the election of 72, Nixon actually looks in very good shape. The Democrats would help out. They elected a very able, very liberal candidate named George McGovern from South Dakota. And Nixon was able to paint him as some kind of drug addled hippie. Here he was, a war hero, awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for flying B-24 bombers in World War II, and they painted him as a drug addled hippie. It's kind of mind boggling, but it worked really well. And with the war winding down, but Govern got famed as part of the anti-war movement, so it didn't help him as much. Nixon really played that culture role. He used a lot of dirty tricks. Maybe after the test, I'll tell you a few of the dirty tricks. You would not believe the stuff he would do. I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one dirty trick. And the Paris peace talks seem to be getting close to some kind of agreement. So Nixon was thinking, I have a chance to win not just a victory, a landslide. But to help get that, one of the dirty tricks was to break into the Democratic National Committee headquarters. They're going to break in. It's at the Watergate Hotel. They're going to wiretap the DNC chair and secretary. And the Watergate is this shockingly ugly hotel and apartments that the Democratic National Committee rented office space. Well, they were completely inept. I didn't type this down. I just oh, they did. So they broke in and they were arrested. They were bundling food. They were tied to the Bay of Pigs and the CIA. Not just that, they had money that tied them to the Nixon campaign that was dubbed Creep, the committee to reelect the president. Yeah, Creep. I'm not making that up. They had a check from Creep. They had check checks. But Nixon organized a cover up, telling the FBI to not negotiate. This was a CIA operation that goes way back to Bay of Pigs, national security. And the issue never came to anything during the election. The McGovern campaign tried, but it never was reported. And so this massive issue, Nixon could say, I had some bad apples in my campaign, I had nothing to do with it. But we now know he did. Why? Because he was taping all the Oval Office conversations. And all of these would come out beginning in 73 and 74. But Nixon would be elected in an overwhelming landslide. Overwhelming. He didn't have the popular vote victory of Johnson, but look at the Electoral College. Isn't that kind of shocking? This, this would be Columbia just got three electorates, so they voted for McGovern and Massachusetts, not even his home state. That's what a resounding victory this was. Landslide. And almost immediately afterwards, the peace agreement that was kind of scuttled, last thing for today, His national security advisor, then Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, would get, he called it peace with honor. The US would pull out troops. American POWs that were held in North Vietnam would be released. Here's one coming home. Here they are celebrating. They're in a commercial airline. Once they took off, they just kind of freaked out for good reason. And this, they said, we'll have reunification down the road, which of course isn't going to happen the way people want. But it was an illusion. South Vietnam was actually near collapse. And North Vietnam would do a big offensive in the fall of 74, and the South Vietnamese government just collapsed. All right. So Thursday.
So Thursday, um, my plan was I will open up. I would like you to take. I I want to see your review packet, and because I want you to be pretty darn close to being done. So I want to see it. I don't want to collect it till next Monday, but I want to see it on Thursday. Well, then you'll turn it on Tuesday. I'll be fine. I mean, if you're going to be gone for an 18th, that's I know some of you put pass. Okay, so if you're going to be off the English one, they turn on on Tuesday, not on Tuesday. Okay. Hey, Yeah. Go figure it out. Just remind me. And so if you come in on Tuesday or Thursday, show me your task and got it done. I'll give you the credit for it. You get it done. And then what I would like you to do is say one more quick practice as a class. Now, floor building, you have a choice. You can either come in just any time during the morning and take one and show me. You take a quick break from the floor building, or show me on Wednesday. I know. So I'm just finishing. I'll tell you, and then I will excuse you. Everyone got that? Yeah. All right. Go. Goodbye. Triple Tia. Thursday coming and taking these kind of a practice session on Wednesday. Well, I'll tell you, but you have to show me your review pack. Uh -huh. Okay. Thursday coming and taking these kind of a Because I know the numbers and stuff. So, and you ladies put it on the 